Lovely. Water up right now to 164 degrees Fahrenheit, and that should uh, get my uh, grains to the temperature I need to uh, have them convert the starch into sugars. It's hot. Everything's hot. I have about four pounds of grain here, a little under that. I'm mixing it with this hot water, so I'll get my sugars that I need. Pretty sweet. Here's more. There's some flake stuff in here. Looks like oats. And that adds a little more body to what I'm trying to do. And my dark grains, I'm gonna add those later because that can actually add some harshness that I don't want. So I'm gonna add those at the end of uh, my conversion here, which take about an hour for our, uh, everything to happen. What happens here is the enzymes will break down the starches that are in the grain husks, and they will uh, break them down into smaller sugar chains that the yeast can eat later. Different temperatures do this, roughly looking at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The lower steeping you do, the more fermentable they're gonna be, averagely, and the higher uh, steeping you do, the less fermentable they're gonna be. So I'm going for imperial stout, so I'm going somewhere in between, about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. I want it to be a little more maltier, a little less fermentable, a little sweeter. That's the target at least. Let's see what I get. All right, looks like I'm at 156 degrees Fahrenheit. I can live with that though. It's still definitely in the ballpark. Put the lid on. I'm gonna let this sit for about 60 minutes or so. And that should be enough time for the enzymes to do their work on the starches and get what I want. See you in 60 minutes. All right, it's been an hour. I'm gonna add the dark grains right now. All right, what I'm gonna do now is cover circulation. I'm gonna clear it up a little bit. That's not a good sign. I know a solution though. Interesting. I don't know a solution. But don't worry about it, I got it fixed. I, I think I got this. Shit. I'm gonna pour the mash into here. I have to undo everything. Whoever's will frown upon this for different reasons. So something's going on with my spout here. Look at it's fully open. There's water in there. It's okay though, you know, I mean, what do you, what do you do? That's the question. Bottle brush? Let's try that. There we go. I did that from the other way and it didn't work. Now it is. Let's go back to the, uh, what I was doing earlier. Now there's definitely a myth with what I'm doing with the grain. And the myth goes that you can create off flavors later on by mixing your mash and pouring it around and basically getting a ton of oxygen into it at this stage. I've never had it, never heard about it. It is called oxide aeration. I'm not worried about it. All right, please work. It was just stuck on the inside from just from other sugars that I must not clean it out that good the last time I cleaned it up. But here we are, we're back in business. So the idea behind what I'm doing here is to clarify the wort a bit so uh, you'll be clear later on. Now I've poured this back and forth twice, has no chance to settle down. That's pretty clear to me. All right. So now I'm running off what's called the first runoff. And then I'm gonna add uh, more water once this is done running off here and collect the full amount and then uh, boil it, add the hops and do the rest of the steps. I'm gonna add another uh, gallon of water or so into uh, the mash I was doing after the first runoff happens and collect my volume. All right, so I'm gonna heat this up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Add into here. Once this is done, run the rest off, we're rocking and rolling.
All right, I got the squatter to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. They usually get this next part of the mash to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And that helps kind of thin everything out, uh, helps stop conversion, and uh, yeah, get my last run off that way. So uh, that works for my system, everyone else's is different. Let it sit for about a minute or two, do the next little like circulation, and then run rest it off and collect my volume. Okay, so this next step I just did here is called a sparge. A couple different ways you can do it. You can do it where I heated water, pour it in. It's called a batch barge. You can do it another way where you slowly trickle water through over the course of about an hour. And it uh, works the same way, really. I do batch barge. It's a little quicker. And nothing really changes for my what's called efficiency. I prefer not to even do a sparge, but the last couple times I've tried it, it hasn't worked that great for me. Pretty clear, by the way. I think I'm going to call it there. Okay, just finished collecting my volume, starting with two gallons. I'm gonna boil for 90 minutes and get about 0.7 gallons. That's roughly what I'm going for there, at all set and done. Uh, let me show you what two gallons looks like. Just hold on, give me one second here. So yeah, take a look right here. Yay! So I'm gonna take what's called a gravity reading and that's gonna tell me the sugar content of this so I kinda know what ABV I'm gonna get in the end. So, so let's do that right now. Oh yeah. This is called a refractometer. And what it does is it measures sugar content. So when the light bounces through, it actually warps the light and tells you how much sugar content is based off the granules of sugar that are in there. So a 1.000, that's no sugar, that's just pure water, pure distilled water. The more sugar you get, you're going to get higher, like 1.030, 1.060, and so on. And the higher it gets, the more sugars you're going to have. What happens is when the yeast eats these sugars, that drops down, the sugars go away and converts into alcohol, and you're left with an ABV. Common beer is probably around 1.060 and ends at 1.010. And that's about a 5% beer, 5.5% beer in that range. We went for an imperial stout. That means my sugar's got to be way, 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 way higher than that because it's going to be probably an 11, 12 percent beer. That's what I'm going for at least. My preliminary sugars that I just took, it's showing at 1.045. That's a great starting point for my one gallon batch I'm doing. And I'm going to target finish around 1.115. So that is very, very, very high. Got the first part I wanted. Very happy. And I'm on target. Look at that, the boil is starting. Now it's going. So the reason why you would boil this for a while, <clears throat> um, it's usually about 90 minutes, 60 minutes. Uh, 60 minutes is pretty average, because you're basically evaporating all the water out of this and concentrating the sugars. And that's how you go from the 1.045 that I'm starting with to 1.115, because you're basically getting a huge, huge sugar concentration out of this. Just get rid of that water, you also caramelize it a little bit. Um, you can get big malty flavors that way, depending on the style you're trying to do. You can get more bitterness depending on how long you want to boil and when you add the hops, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, that's the essential basis, basis of it. And uh, you can also drive off, off flavors that can create sort of vegetable flavors later on. So there's a lot of benefits to boiling. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I just started this, going for 90 minutes. So let's jump ahead 30 minutes from now for my first hop edition. Here we are, 30 minutes later. I'm going to add the first dose of hops here. So the reason for adding the hops at 60 minutes is they actually restructure in the boil and you get bitterness out of them. If you put them in a boil for 90 minutes, they'll be a little more bitter. So you can get like really huge bitter beer if you go for like 120 minutes essentially. Although it's probably about the max, you can even have them restructure is it around that time. But 90 minutes, 60 minutes, uh, is pretty common. I'd say 60 minutes is very common to add hops in a boil and the later you add them the more aroma and flavors you're gonna get. So you can kind of control what kind of uh, flavors and bitterness and aromas that you want to get out of your beers. This is a big imperial stout. I want this to be on the more on the bitter side. I'm adding one now. I'm gonna add one with 15 minutes left in the boil and that's it. For my IPAs I'll sometimes do a 60 minute edition. So a 60 minute boil for the bitter edition, turn the heat off and then add a, my, what's called steeping hops and let them steep 
in like 200 degree Fahrenheit range, 180 degrees Fahrenheit range for about 15, 20 minutes. And that way I'm getting a lot more flavor, a lot more aroma. That's a lot. Of, that's how those hazy IPAs are made mostly. Uh, that's how you get like, you know, the session beers, uh, anything that's like really flavorful and big in an IPA, that's usually what happens. So there you go. 15 minutes left in the boil. Time to have my next edition. All right, it's been 90 minutes. Time to turn this off. So this is a uh, sanitizer called Star San, basically a high acid uh, cleanser. It gets rid of any sort of bacteria and stuff. I'm gonna be using it a lot from here on out because I do not want anything wild getting in here. And it's crucial from this point out to like cool, cool it down to my pitching temperature, which is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So my measuring stick, I've sanitized this. This has also been in the hot boil as well, so it's double sanitized. I'm gonna take a quick volume measurement here. I think I'm a little higher than I like to be. It's showing right now I'm about 0.9 gallons. So I was going for 0.7. I don't think my sugars would be as high as I was going for. I had to boil a little longer, I think. Uh, but I'm still gonna call it here. Uh, it's still gonna be a very big stout and I'm okay with what I got. So I'm gonna cool this down and then we'll uh, measure the sugars here in a second. So this is called a wart chiller. And what happens with this is you run really, really cold water through this and it chills down your wart really, really quickly. I'm gonna add a bunch of ice to this and then I'm gonna pump with this pump really cold water through the wart chiller and out until this goes down a little bit. And then once this chills down, I'm gonna put this back in, this side back in, and it'll, it'll cycle that cold water through it until this cools down if I wanna get to it. Oh. Oh. This side here goes into here like so. I'm gonna submerge this. And we're off and running. So this should be chilled down in about 15, 20 minutes, I'm guessing. Now that's been, it was probably, has been about six, seven minutes or so. And I'm already at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty good, pretty fast. I like it, it works pretty well. So I'm putting this back into here now and this just cycles really, really cold water around until it's chilled down to my uh, target temp. It's a little hard to see. I gotta get my, my light out here. So it looks like I'm at 1.106. I was going for about 1.115, a little under that. I could tell it would be because my volume was a little higher, which means the, I didn't get as much concentration. So it didn't boil down as far as I wanted. Uh, that's okay though. Uh, I'm still very, very high in my sugar concentration. Uh, it's still going to be a really big beer. I'm looking at about 10% ABV, most likely if all goes well. So I still roughly got what I wanted. I'm going to chill this down the rest of the way and then transfer it into my one gallon jug and then pitch the yeast and I'll be done. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. I am at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's awesome. That's where I want to be. I'm going to call it here and do the next step. <laughs> What I'm doing now is I'm just shaking it, getting some oxygen into this because yeast love oxygen. I'm actually probably gonna throw a little bit of actual pure oxygen into this in a minute. They need it, so the yeast need that oxygen to uh, you know help metabolize and convert the sugar into alcohol. It's a big beer, so I'll probably swirl it about 24 hours under fermentation. Uh, I may even throw more yeast into there because it need, it's gonna need it. To know more about how to do this, if it's your first time ever brewing about how to brew, if you've never done this before, or you've done an all grain brew, whatever the reason. I'll link some articles below, I'll link some references below in my description so you can see more about the process, how to all grain brew, how to extract brew. Uh, the best way to go about starting this is to do an extract brew. It's like you buy syrup, you see some grains, you pour to a boil, and essentially the same process as what I just did. But it's a great way to start. So uh, thank you for watching, uh, subscribe, click that button, it's the thing people do I've heard, uh, like it, smash that like button, that's also a thing I've heard. One point one zero. I got a false reading the first time, it's a lot better.